What is a bypass for a pool heater? This is something that you might have heard about. There's there there could be external bypasses or internal bypasses within the heater, uh, kind of for different applications a little bit. But essentially what this comes down to is you can have a heater installed in a swimming pool system such that the water must flow through the heater. There's no other options. It has to go. And that's called like an inline heater installation. And as a result, there's going to be a lot of resistance to flow. There's going to be a lot of inefficiency in that system by forcing the water through the heater because the heater is or provides a lot of resistance to flow. So if there was an option to bypass the heater such that the water did not have to flow through it, well, that would be more flow efficient. And that's one of the reasons why you might have a heater bypass. Internally, within the heater, when not currently heating the water, the vast majority of the water is just kind of going to go straight in and straight out of the heater, thereby bypassing it almost entirely. And it's going to be a lot more efficient. And then when that heater turns on its call for heat and wants to, to heat up the water, that internal bypass mechanism is going to change. And now the entirety of the flow is going to pass through the heater. It's going to be a little bit less efficient for your system flow during that time because there is more resistance to flow but that's what you need to do if you want your heater to run so that's what a heater bypass is internally now there's only a few brands of heaters that offer that i think jandy might be one of the only ones but for the average swimming pool installation you always have the option of adding an external heater bypass now this is done via a series of valves either one two or three valves are used to redirect the flow to and from the heater such that the water can go to the heater or it can bypass the heater or sometimes with a three zone bypass you can have the water going to the heater as well as some of the water bypassing the heater again this all just comes down to flow efficiency um, you know you could have a situation where you have a massively powerful pump and you move a ton of water through your system and there's no way your heater could handle that much flow that would be one of these examples where you create a bypass so only part of the flow of the system goes through the heater there's a lot of reasons you, you might need a bypass for your heater here's a popular one so you should periodically need to go through breakpoint chlorination of your swimming pool which is to say that you temporarily increase the chlorine levels to 10 times the combined chlorine count in the pool. So you could end up with 5, 10, 15 parts per million of free chlorine in your pool during this treatment process, which takes 12 to 14 hours, something like that. So during this time, boy, it sure would be great if we could bypass the heater such that we aren't going to put this, you know, this water has a sky high sanitizer level in it right now, only temporarily though. If you pass that water through your heater, it is going to do an incremental amount of damage to the inside of your heater. It's not going to destroy it in one shot, but it's sure not good for it either. And breakpoint chlorination is something that you should be doing to your swimming pool somewhat regularly to make sure that you do not end up with a buildup of combined chlorine in your water. And so this is something that I recommend to people definitely. If you're going to be super chlorinating, wouldn't you want to be able to bypass your heater? Doesn't that make more sense? than having this high sanitizer level going through your heater, potentially reducing the service life of your heater. And I'm not talking about a tiny amount either, like a, a pool heater that gets expo exposed to 20, 30, or 50 events of high sanitizer level over its service life. It could have its service life cut in half by that. And we're talking about a $3,000 appliance here. So you definitely want to get the maximum longevity out of it. And the way that you do that is you install a bypass such that you can divert water away from your heater during periods of time where you have very adverse water chemistry or high sanitizer levels. Now, it's worthwhile to mention you can't just leave a heater bypassed because that would also be bad. There's water inside of it and it's sitting there stagnant. So usually about 24 hours is the maximum amount of time that you would want to leave a heater bypassed unless you want to go through the process of actually draining it and draining all that water out of it. Most people do not. You just kind of use that 24-hour window such that you could do your 
breakpoint chlorination, allow that chlorine level to drop back down to more reasonable levels, and then open up your heater bypass again and allow that water to go through. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.